Hi everyone, I'm Miss Pat and I'm going to be doing your Sunday School lesson today. The name of our story is going to be The Birth of Baby Moses. But before we get into the story, let's review a little bit. Do you remember once we talked about a family, Jacob's family, who had 12 sons? The 11th son was named Joseph. Now Joseph was his father's favorite son. So how do you think that made the other boys feel? Maybe a little bit jealous? Anyway, Joseph had many different dreams, and sometimes he told his brothers about the dreams, like the time there were all these bales of hay and they were bowing down to him. And the brothers said, you think we're going to bow down to you? They didn't like that one bit. So one day when all the brothers were out in the field tending their flocks, the father sent Joseph out to them and said, take this food out to your brothers and see how they're doing. Well, when the brothers saw Joseph coming, they said, we need to get rid of Joseph. We don't like the way he's talking about us. And we don't like it that he's our father's favorite. So when he came to them, they grabbed him and they threw him into a deep pit. And when some traders from, were coming by that were on their way to Egypt, they took Joseph and they sold him to the traders as a slave and meanwhile the brothers went back and told their father Joseph was killed by a ferocious animal so of course his father was very sad because he thought Joseph was dead but you know how sometimes things happen and we think it's really bad but God turns it into something really good well that's what he did for Joseph because when Joseph became a slave and he started working and doing different things, some of the people he worked for found out that he had a special talent, that he could interpret dreams. That means he could tell you what your dreams meant. Well, Pharaoh, who was the head of all of Egypt, had Joseph come to him and he said, I've been having some troubling dreams. Could you interpret them for me? So Pharaoh told Joseph his dreams. And Joseph explained that they were going to have seven years in the country of very good growing seasons. There'd be lots of food for everybody and everyone would have plenty to eat. But this would be followed by seven years of drought. That's when there's not enough rain and the crops can't grow and they won't be able to have enough food. So Joseph suggested that they save up some of the grain and some of the food from the first seven good years and use them for the seven last bad years so they all have enough food. Pharaoh thought this was a really good idea and he made Joseph ruler over all of Egypt. So now we begin our story. More than 400 years had gone by since Jacob and his family went to live in Egypt. During those years, the family had grown from a group of about 70 people to a great nation called the Israelites or the people of Israel. These were God's children. They loved him and they knew he was going to take care of them. Many years after Jacob and Joseph had died, a new pharaoh came to power in Egypt. He did not know about Joseph and all he had done for the Egyptians. Look, he told his people, there are too many of these Israelites in our country. We must do something or their nation will grow larger and even more powerful than we are. And if a war breaks out, they might join with our enemies, fight against us, and leave our country. So Pharaoh put cruel bosses over the Israelites and made them work as slaves. He forced some of them to make bricks and others to make huge cities for him. He made others to do hard work in the fields. But God was with the Israelites, so Pharaoh's plan did not succeed. The hard work only made the Israelites stronger, and they had more and more children, and Pharaoh grew more and more worried. Then Pharaoh came up with a new plan. He told the women who helped the Israelite mothers give birth to their babies, if a baby boy is born to an Israelite woman, kill him, and if it's a girl, let her live. The women believed in God, however, and they did not obey Pharaoh. So the Israelites continued to grow in number. Finally, Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, throw every baby boy that is born to the Israelites in the Nile River. Shortly after Pharaoh gave this cruel order, an Israelite woman gave birth to a son. 
She was afraid that the Egyptians would take her baby and drown him, so she hid her son in her home for three months. When she couldn't hide him any longer, she took a basket made out of reeds and covered it with tar. She placed her baby into the basket and carried it down to the Nile River. And there she put the basket among the tall reeds that grew along the bank of the river. The baby's sister Miriam watched from a distance to see what would happen. When Miriam was watching, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to bathe. And when she saw the basket floating among the reeds, she sent one to her servants to get it. The princess opened the basket and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Israelite babies, she said. The baby's sister came forward from her hiding place. Do you want me to get one of the Israelite women to take care of him? She asked. Yes, said Pharaoh's daughter. And Miriam hurried home and brought the baby's own mother. Take care of this baby for me and I will pay you, said the princess. So the mother took her baby home and cared for him. And when he was old enough, he took the baby back to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. The princess called him Moses, which means to draw out, because she had drawn or pulled him out of the water. Let's talk about God's plan and how it worked, and Pharaoh's plan, how it didn't work. So Pharaoh originally wanted to make all the Israelites work very, very hard to make them weak, but God made them strong. Pharaoh's plan to kill the baby boys right after, right after they were born didn't work because those women saved those baby boys because they believed God and knew what was right to do. And the third one, when Pharaoh wanted to throw all the baby boys into the river, God saved baby Moses too by letting Pharaoh's daughter say she wanted the baby after she found him and having his Moses' own mother take care of him. That was God's plan all along. And you'll see as we get to our next stories throughout the next couple of weeks how God has really big plans for Moses and the Israelites. So our memory work today is from 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So to cast means to throw something away, to get rid of it. And anxiety is anything that's worrying you or causing you concerns, things that you really think about. So God wants us to take all those worries, all those burdens, all the things that are really bothering us and to give them to him and he will take care of them for us. And all through life, there's going to be things that we cannot handle on our own. So God tells us, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Read it with me one more time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Okay, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and we'll finish with prayer. Almighty God, thank you for the many blessings you give us every day. Keep us safe from dangers to our bodies and protect us also from dangers to our souls. Help us stay faithful to you always. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.